Hey, Trisha Lee, you won the giveaway from last week. Comic fam, enjoy your trending comics list. What's good, comic fam? Another week, another list of the trending comics in the comic book marketplace, and I'm at the table with an Overstreet Price Guide advisor, LCS owner. We got the comic sensei in the house, Russ Bright. How you feeling? I am really, really great this week. You know what, Tom? There are so many cool books on the list. Some are brand new, some are a little bit older. It really just runs the gamut, and I am so excited to get into it with you. Comic fam, you gotta slap that subscribe button. We got Peach Momoko goodness on deck for a giveaway, so stay tuned to the end of the video and hit the like button for us. Let's start them off at the list at number 10. We have some Rose Besh goodness making the list. We knew it was going to happen. Absolutely, Tom. Number 10 on the list, we have Silk number two. This is the one in 25 Rose Besh variant. This is brand new this week, but right out the gate, it's going for an $80 average sale. Now we knew that this would happen back when the Spider-Woman 9 variant was released. It was pre-selling for above $500. That book's landed just below 200, but still respectable. We also have the Department Department of Truth number nine issue is a store exclusive. That's a banger. Thing is gorgeous. And then Batman 108, another store exclusive. It looks like members of the community are getting in, trying to make exclusives with what could be the next biggest up and coming artist. Rose Besh is so hot right now. I'm really excited about this Miles Morales 26 variant. There's actually one where we've got Miles and Spider-Gwen. It's kind of like a connecting cover, but it's not exactly a connecting cover. It is so hot. Really, really digging it. I even had one of my Patreon supporters order 25 copies of Silk Number 2 just to be able to be guaranteed the Rose Besh variant. Shout out, Jay. And now we're at the list at number nine with a underappreciated and undervalued book. We have all new Wolverine issue number one, the debut of X-23 in that classic Wolverine costume, hitting $20 average sales and a high sell for a CBCS 9.8 of $140. Why the increase of 350% in copies sold in the last seven days? Laura Kinney has been a fan favorite for quite some time. And the fact that she's going to be in this new X-Men title as a part of the new team is amazing. We have Gary Dugan and Pepe. Raz being able to combine on this brand new team. A lot of characters we know, some characters we don't know, but I'm very excited to see what happens in the aftermath of X of Swords and what's going on after Krakoa. We've been wondering for quite some time what direction Marvel is going to take our mutants post the brilliant work of Hickman. And come July, we have a new roster, a new X-Men team. We have Marvel Girl, Sunfire, Cyclops, Rogue, Wolverine, Cinch, and Polaris leading. And take a look at this four-issue connecting variant set for cover A. We have the Stormbreakers coming together as a team, making some brilliant artwork. Take a look at the Sunfire done by Peach Momoko and the stunning work of Rogue by Patrick Gleason, one of my new favorite artists this year. Number eight on the list, we have another new book this week, The Marvels, number one. Now, the book that we're talking about is the one in 50 variant, which is done by Gabrielle Delato. People have to keep in mind that this is not the same thing as Marvels, which is the Kurt Busiek, Alex Ross series. This is The Marvels. But right out of the gate, this book was selling for $80, $95 with a high sale of $200. And I don't see this going anywhere. Well, we got Spider-Man, Iron Man, and Captain. Captain America all on the cover. And when you got Gabriel Del Otto doing it with that signature painted style, you know it's going to be hot. This is one of those creators, and it's fun that you mentioned Marvels. You know, the Alex Ross correlation is real. Mm -hmm. He is like the most similar to quality as well as vibrance when he puts that brush to the canvas that it's no surprise that the members are hunting for this as aggressively as they are, especially with a narrative such as this one. This first issue is no holds barred. We've got an invasion from orbit. We have Reed Richards in 1947. We have a picnic in a park. This is going all over the place from the earth to cosmic. I'm not quite certain where they're going with this, but what a great starter issue to plant a whole lot of seeds. And now we're at the list at number seven with Nottingham issue number one, the second print. I read issue number two. It just dropped a little bit ago. And this story continues and it only gets more exciting. It's dark. It's Robin Hood, but with so much more dread and violence. However, we're looking at $30 average sales for a book that, dude, back when this dropped, you were pissed. That is absolutely correct, Tom. I was pissed about the first print of this book because we ordered about 15 copies and got three copies. 
And then they announced they're making a second print. So I ordered 15 copies for the people that wanted them. And I got two copies. And this is really a little ridiculous because it's great that some people are getting to read it, but Diamond is over soliciting these books. Diamond is selling more copies that are out there and there are shops that are getting allocated. I still have about 10 readers that really just want to read the first story and see if it's even worth them trying to get issue number two, three, four, and five. I don't know what's going on right now. It's great that it's selling for $30. I know that the demand is out there. I am getting calls for it at the shop, but it's really frustrating when as a shop, they tell us final order cutoff, get in your orders. I say 15, they give me two. It's not cool guys. Stay tuned. We have more conversations to be had about Diamond's decision regarding the distribution and allocation of comic books. I'm seeing a lot of complaints in the community about publishers, and it is misdirected. Now, let's take a look at the next one on the list. We have number six, some scout goodness that debuted post-successful Kickstarter back in 2016, Once Our Land. Number six on the list, Once Our Land Number One, which is a two-part miniseries from Scout Comics. It's set in 1830 in Germany, people fighting against Lovecraftian monsters, $40 average sales, and $259 for a CGC 9.8. This is an all-age story. Butch loves it. And the comic fam will too. The art is fantastic. You mentioned Lovecraftian. I mean, we have monsters that wipes out an entire community Mm -hmm. in two very memorable lead characters, Ingrid and Fritz, a very young girl, and then an older guy who is so lovable. And it's their adventure to stop these monsters that are eating people. Some Attack on Titan vibes, but done in a way that's appropriate for children. 1,300% increase in copies sold, and while they're fighting monsters, we get to explore the relationship between a 62-year-old warrior with a massive heart and an 11-year-old survivor who will not stop fighting. This really just sounds like a great story, a whole lot of fun, and I am looking forward to be able to watch this with my kids. Halfway through the list at number five, we have Berserker issue number one, the third print foil edition, My Cat's Biting Me, Comic Fam Slap the Like Button, Butch needs your support. We're shooting for a hundred thumbs up on this video. Can we make it? But we do have $50 average sales on what's seemingly a grossly underprinted book. What information did you find this week, Russ? So I had the absolute pleasure of talking to Ross Ritchie, who's the head honcho over at Boom Studios, and we had a very interesting conversation. Basically, the whole idea was that people have been complaining about the low print runs on this. And I asked him, what's the deal? And this is what he told me. The first print run had a huge print run. Many stores ordered big and still happily had first prints they planned to sell in the coming months to Keanu fans who were new customers coming in. But other smaller stores sold out, so the book went back to order at Diamond. They went to second print. Foils take longer to make, which is why the regular covers and the foils of number one shipped separately. They needed to get those to stores faster, so they made only 10,000 of the second print, thinking that would cover what needed to happen. The orders get three times the print run. Then they go to third print. Same thing happens. One single store tries to order all 10,000 copies, and a few others attempt to order 3,000 copies trying to game the system. Right now, they are going to fourth print. They are going to cover every single order of fourth print that comes in, and the person who is making them is actually concerned about running out of foil. This is insane, people. So right now we're seeing members starting to complain about Boom Studios and how they're distributing this, but this is not Boom Studios' fault. Absolutely not, Tom. This is the type of thing that during my conversation with Ross, it really was very clear that they were doing everything they could to meet the demand, and there was someone else, Diamond, who may have been overselling these things. When you have Diamond Comics allowing any retailer to order a full print run of anything, that's wrong. When you have any online retailers that are attempting to get 3,000 copies of something, that's wrong. This should be nipped in the bud. I understand we're going to get allocations. If you do some quick math, 10,000 copies, 2,500 brick and mortar stores, that's four copies per store, right? You shouldn't have anyone able to get many more than that. So if you have someone trying to get even a thousand copies online, there's just something wrong with that. So it was very, very clear that the ordering was handled in the wrong way. And Boom is getting a lot of the fallout from this when I don't believe it's their fault. Complain to Diamond. If there's a cap needed, it's going to be on them to make that happen. Now, let's take a look at number four on the list with some more mutant spec. We have the origin of Magneto. 
on Kenny X-Men, issue number 161. Chris Claremont, goodness. $35 average sales and $130 for a CGC 9.8. Again, this feels undervalued for this book. Tom and I went and read through this book again because I read it so long ago I didn't remember it. Oh my God, it's really actually explaining what Magneto was, why his powers didn't manifest until he was into adulthood. It's a surprisingly big book from this roundly forgotten X-Men run. Well, we have Charles Xavier, or Charlie if Chris Claremont was talking about him, having a flashback, a memory courtesy of the brood infecting his mind, where him and Magneto had to fight Nazi Baron Strucker and a horde of Hydra members. So we are seeing a lot of mutant spec this week, but a 1,650% increase of this book seems really, really out of the ordinary. Now, there is that heavy divide in the X-Men series that basically days of future past happens and everything past it is not worth a whole lot. People have been specking on binary for the past couple years. So we're seeing some of these books starting to spike for no real reason. Tread kind of lightly here because there are a lot of high grade copies of this book out there. We've gotten this in so many X-Men runs over the years and and in high grade because a lot of people don't really care about this particular time frame of Chris Claremont on the title. Number three on the list, we have another brand new book, Black Widow number six, which is the first appearance of Marigold, Lucy Nguyen, who is one of the protégés of Natasha. $12 average sales on this book immediately. This is a beautiful comic, man. Mm -hmm. Adam Hughes cover, killer story. It's kind of a one shot that takes a break from the traditional narrative to just take us through Natasha having to break into a building to fight souped up soldiers and to kick ass in the way that she does, you know, without power. She has to you know, really take people on fighting style and the vivid drawings, the color work is outstanding. And we see a break midway through the comic introducing a new character who tries to pickpocket her, but that's not going to work. You know, we're dealing with Black Widow. She's yeah. got everything mapped out. And when you find out at the end why she had to break into this building, it all makes sense. They're starting us with a new narrative that's going to introduce an integral character. Now, I want to point out there is a one in 10 design variant showing this protege on cover in costume. The design variant is going for $20 this week, and I really think if this character turns into something as big as it possibly could be, that's going to be one to grab too. At the list of number two, we got some Brian K. Vaughn brilliance. I have a lion cat on my lap. I have a lion cat tattoo on my arm for good reason. $25 average sales for this issue number one with a high sale of $215 for a 9.8. Get this. Last month, you could get three copies of issue number one graded at 9.8 for under $300 why did it spike? Well, we have casting announced. We knew back in July 2019 that this run, highly respected, that went from 2015 and ended in 2019, was picked up for Amazon. And this week, casting confirmed it's coming soon. So we've been talking about this book since July of 2019 when we first had information that it was optioned for a TV series. And then in July of 2020, there was more information about it. So still a 760% increase is a lot this week. The story follows four paper girls in a fictional suburb of Cleveland who are delivering papers the day after Halloween when a space invasion disrupts their whole worlds. We have Stand By Me meets War of the Worlds, a very respected run that we're excited to see hit Amazon. We have casting for four new up-and-coming stars. This story is going to take the world by storm. I really believe in this narrative. This thing could be a surprising, underappreciated sleeper key book that's still affordable. Tom, every time I hear about a book like this, it makes me wonder what streaming service is making the news now. Comic fam, utilize the code TOM101 over on the best comic app in existence, Key Collector Comics. It'll unlock a free two-week subscription, and you need to peek the streaming categories. They're all laid out for you. I'm not just talking Amazon. I'm talking HBO Max. I'm talking Netflix, Hulu. Everything's broken down by category, and it's convenient for you to keep up on all of this information. Keep up with us and support the show. Now let's chat about the number one trending comic book in the world. We knew it was coming. James Tynan the Fourth's goodness. Erica Slaughter just slaughtering the comic scene. We have Something Is Killing the Children, issue number one. 
no surprise at all in this book. 325 average raw sale for a number one with a thousand dollar average sale for a CGC 9.8. We are seeing multiple of those. Keep in mind that on March 1st, 625 was the high. So even then the price has been going up and up and up. This book is not seeing a ceiling anytime soon. This is one of those books that I believe so much in. As soon as we see a trailer, hell, casting, heck, even like designs that are planning the show, it's going to be a banger. Erica Slaughter is one of the best female protagonists in comics to date. And a story about invisible monsters killing children, this is going to blow up the comic scene. People are going to love this story. Now, back in June 2020, James Tynan mentioned in his newsletter, The Empire of the Tiny Onion, that he had been having top secret talks about something in development. Well, this last week, we found out that Something is Killing the Children is in development for a TV series, which made this already expensive book go up 129% in copies sold. This thing is scorching. I want to point out the American Library Association variant of this. There was only 780 copies created. The ALA variant, if you would, that's seeing $3,000 sales for a raw copy. Then I also wanted to mention the FOIL variant. It's a 2020 local comic shop day exclusive. And we were able to confirm um, based off of Bleeding Cool's analysis, they put a projection of just under 30,000. I happen to know it's just over 30,000 were printed of that particular variant. And it's way more affordable than issue number one. And that print count is way lower than the recent issue number one, eighth print. So the eighth print of Something is Killing the Children number one came out this week. Now it is publicly stated there are 75,000 copies of this book. So the fact that it's selling on eBay for 15 to $20 is really unwarranted. It's a massively high print run. And the fact that in... Berserker number one, the foil print, there was a coupon that said if you take this coupon and proof that you bought number two to your local comic shop, you will get a free copy of this book. So if your shop isn't giving them away for free, if they're selling them on eBay, chastise them, man. This is not cool. This is a book that should be free, should not be selling for 15 to $20. We really just want people to read the story because it is that awesome. Comic fam, what do you think about this list? Do you own any of these books? Do you like Something is Killing the Children? Let me know in the comment section below. And I want you to win this Peach Momoko variant trade dress version of TMNT 110. First, last Ronin in preview. And as always, damn it. Geek responsibly. Nuff said. Russ, the comic fam can support us by giving us an excuse to send them comics every single month. Where can they go? They should go to comictom101.com. Link in the description down below. This month, we have an incredible Women of Marvel variant done by Sabine Rich featuring the always incredible She-Hulk. And every single member is going to be getting our first Batman exclusive, Batman Detective issue number one, done by the God of War art director, Raph Grissetti. We've teamed up with Scorpion Comics again so that we can get half the print run to guarantee a version of this issue. There's trade dress, minimals, as well as virgin copies going out at random. And if you just want to get one or all of them, you can go to Scorpion Comics while supplies last. We appreciate you, comic fam. Have a great week.